So I never ended up finishing my uh, unboxing videos of the games from the Library of Napoleonic Battles. Um, these are the OSG titles um, from Kevin Zucker. And uh, this was the fifth one in the series. I did, I believe I did Four Lost Battles, uh, The Coming Storm, The Last Success, and Napoleon at Leipzig. Um, I never did uh, La Patrie en Danger um, because it, it was already punched, or I'd already punched it out and was playing it at the time that I started doing these videos and acquired most of these other games. Uh, since then, I've picked up um, additionally, let's see over there, all the titles there. Um, I've picked up uh, Napoleon's Last Gamble, which is the Waterloo campaign. And then I also have a copy of Napoleon at Bay, which was the original um, first title uh, in this kind of operational level Napoleonic series. So um, I will also take a look at Napoleon's Last Gamble. And just recently, what just came out and what kind of inspired me to pick these videos up again um, was uh, the Napoleon's Quagmire, which is a number of battles from the, the Spanish campaign. So. Uh, eventually, I will get a copy of that. I don't have it yet. It did just come out, um, I think, just a matter of weeks ago. So um, that will eventually be added to the collection. Um, but first, we take a look at Napoleon against Russia. So this covers the invasion of Russia, as it says. Um, we need to be able to hold this so that the light is appropriate to it. Um, this has Smolensk, uh, Valentino, Shevardino, Borodino, and uh, Maloyar Maloyaroslavets, I guess. Um, so, major campaigns in the Russian invasion. So, let's open it up. And we have the cards. And I always liked the cards in this uh, because um, they show a specific back for each side. So this looks like the French cards here. You can see that looks like Moscow burning um, or just the countryside in general burning as the French troops invade. And then for the Allied cards, some Russian commander there waving his men forward. Maybe it's uh, Bagration too, too young to be Kutuzov. So have the rules here. And um, I'm not sure what version these are, if it says, there's a date here, 2014, so, oh, there, series rules 6.63, which I don't believe is the latest edition. I've got a binder, um, like the, the, the stuff, so all the latest system rules are available on his website um, for download, and so, and they're in color um, if you print them out, so I've got a binder. It has the latest living rules for the series in it, but um, classic uh, Zucker style rules. Uh, it's, a, it's such a venerable system. Um, the rules are fairly well polished and they're actually fairly simple. Um, I did a, uh, some video of um, Napoleon's Last Battles, which was the old SPI title um, that start kind of started this whole, kicked off this whole series, and that was like super, super simple system. Um, almost almost too simple, <laughs> but still fun. Um, and, and I think that's what appeals to me about these, uh, the Zucker designs here is um, that they're still fun. It's, it's, or it's just a fun system to play. Uh, not particularly complex, but meaty enough um, that you can get a good operational sense of all of these campaigns and uh, very very well researched um, in terms of you know the scholarly level of historical research put into each game in terms of orders of battle and uh, maps and historical notes and things like that here is the um, uh, I was uh, cool they always called them study folders um, you know which is basically most people would call this like your scenario book um, but study folder. There you have it. Um, but this has all of your historical notes, design notes, etc. Uh, first list out the scenarios, um, how you can do the 
large campaign, some of the game specific stuff. Some victory, there's the Battle of Smolensk. Shabardino, Valutino, Borodino, Maliorislavitz, I guess. I'm trying to say it fast. Then you can do the Smolensk mini campaign, and I believe yeah, there's a grand campaign, which is where you just run through all the battles. Uh, you can't really link the maps. I think there's two of the maps that are linked, which we'll see when I, when I lay the maps out. Um, in historical notes. Interesting. So here it gets into specific um, notes and information on each of the individual battles. Um, cool. Actually, I, have to, I haven't read that yet, so I'll have to read combat tables in the back. I believe there's also a fold-over sheet included in here um, that has, yeah, combat tables. It's next up in the box after the errata sheets. Here is the, um, and there, there's always uh, these in the games, which is either good or bad, depending on how you good at, look at it. Good in that um, at least these are included uh, to explain any issues. Bad in that these needed to be included to explain any issues. <laughs> so... Um, Usually you don't want to have pre-printed professional errata pack packaged right in the box, but um, and it's it's not so much errata as just these the, the rules any updates to the rules that happen in the time it goes to print um, and the time that that uh, the rules are changed is when you end up with stuff like this. Um, unfortunately, every one of these games has a sheet like this in it, so I don't know what that says. And then here's the player charts, only one copy of these um, I've taken to printing off extras from the website um, just to have, when I play this opposed, um, just to have two two sets of it. Um, yeah, these are the, the specific terrain effects charts. So. And then there's turn record tracks uh, for each title, or each battle, rather. So here's the one for Smolensk, and it's got uh, your your turns here um, for let's see starting yeah so it just goes through from 6 a.m. through 8 p.m. The, the two dates up here were screwing me up but this just runs straight through from night to night over the over the uh, the two days so and we have that oh, those are blank on the back yes. Here's the one for Valutino, more of the same. This one's got a little picture on it. I guess they all have little pictures on them. Shabardino. And these are on fairly typical cardstock. Um, but it's nice to have the turn record tracks for each thing on cardstock. I tend to stick them under the plexi that the map is under. And uh, that always works out pretty well. Malyra Slevitz. And then there are, and that's one of the nice things about uh, the Zucker designs is they are always loaded up with lots of cardboard. Um, he puts the setup charts um, for each of the different battles on their own, or each each different side um, on their own cardstock. So here you can see there's three of these setup cards. Not just three, actually. No, yeah, three of the setup cards for the French. We have here French casualty record tracks. Um, there's the CRT on there. And then we've got the Russian and their numbers down here, so you know how many there are. Same thing. I won't really spend too much time looking at these because it's very fine print. That just has a lot of setup information. So four charts for the Russians. Same thing here. Russian casualty tracks. Okay, there's there's the CRT, so it does have a it does have a card. So I just had the sheet. That's the CRT explanation. And then you have each one of these newer games has this little sheet about adding the cards. Um, that explains how to put the cards in there. It has a card manifest, some advertising on the back, and then here. It says remove cards from deck. Not sure what this is. 
Oh, for each of the battles, certain cards are pulled for each of the battles. And then here is for your um, tracking your casualties. And you stick this next to the board. You can actually cut this in half and uh, give one to each side. And then here, it's interesting, the victory worksheet. I've never seen the victory worksheets in the other games. Maybe this is a bigger campaign. And I'm going to stop it here before we look at the counters because I am running out of time on my phone. And we'll come back and look at the counters and the maps. All right, I've got uh, the maps laid out. But first, we can take a look at the counter sheets. And um, these are in typical um, OSG fashion. Um, they're actually very sharp looking counters, I think. Um, some people might find them a little bit cluttered or busy, um, but all the numbers and all the key information on it is very legible and presented very well. Um, unfortunately, without any backlighting here, the lighting's not great where I'm at. Uh, in order to get my maps lit well, this is where I had to set the camera. Otherwise, the camera itself puts shadows over the, over the maps. But uh, we've got the Counter sheets here. Here's all the French counters. Um, the darker ones, I believe, are the guard. The lighter ones are your normal line troops. And it looks like we've got Polish troops down here at the bottom. Um, a number of uh, in command, out of command markers, and so forth. Uh, various allied powers to the French, like Bavarians and stuff like that. Um, as you can see on the back, for fog of war, they've all got the flags in the back. Uh, because usually when you're not moving them, you have them flipped over so that your opponent doesn't know um, what you've got, at least for the for the leaders, because the leaders are what will usually be on top. Um, and then also you can use, obviously on the back of the in-command, you've got extra flag counters if you need them. Sheet number two has the Russians. And uh, Interestingly, the Russians are brown in this, as most Napoleonic games that I've seen uh, have the Russians with green counters. Um, think of something like Labatai, the uh, Labatai system. Um, commands, and, uh, commands and colors Napoleonics, you know, the Russians are green blocks. Uh, Empires and arms, the Russians are green. So usually, because they wore green coats at the, in this era. But uh, for whatever reason, they're brown here, so I don't know if there's some level of um, a scholarly research or something that Kevin Zucker and his researchers came across, uh, or if this would confuse with other green counters, I'm not sure in this system, you know, except for the Turks maybe, who are also typically presented as green, but there aren't any battles against the Turks that, that the uh, OSG uh, Library of Napoleonic Battles has covered, so I'm not sure. But anyway, you get all the Russian troops are brown, same thing on the back, they've got the, the Russian eagle. Um, so there's the counters, just two counter sheets, not a high counter density in this at an operational level. Um, you know, it's going to be, the counters are going to be a little, little sparser. Think of it in terms of, uh, or as being similar scale wise to like the Civil War Brigade series for the gamers. Anyway, the first of the maps here, this is one that actually, the only ones in this particular, uh, set that actually adjoin to each other. The others are all separate. Um, this is Smolensk here in the center, and uh, the this um, eastern map is for the Valutino, the lost rear guard, um, and that is apparently the movement of the French out of Smolensk and further along towards Moscow. Um, Smolensk is here in the center, and you can see. Um, that's, this is actually where the two maps join together. Um, so if you do, I guess the, the, the longer campaign, um, is where you would join the two maps together and fight the entire, uh, Smolensk approach and rear guard. As you can see, it's a very long, narrow map as opposed to, um, something that's usually more square shaped, um, when, when you would join maps. And so on this map, you could fight... Um, the actual Smolensk battle, um, and then join the two together. Set the camera.
camera back down. Got my on my tripod here, so when I pick it up using my phone, when I pick the tripod up, I can hold it a little steadier than if I were just holding the phone um, in my hand. So we'll move these out of the way. So the next map here, and I've got my Central America map set up underneath. Most of my other tables are occupied. I've got some, this was, had been kind of my general workspace table, um, and then I set up Central America um, to start learning that, but my other tables are full. I've got Germantown um, from the, you can't see because of the glare on the box, but it's the battles from the Age of Reason, Brandywine and Germantown. Um, I played Brandywine, oh, early, in early 2016, so about a year ago, and uh, but I never got to Germantown, so I'm getting that set up to take that over. And then back here, I've got uh, the third edition of High Frontier um, that just arrived uh, about a week ago. So in the process of learning that, so my table space got kind of sucked up. Um, so laying out these maps was going to be a challenge. I had to lay it over the top of my uh, Central America map, which got kind of messed up as a result. That's okay, though. Um, so here we have... Uh, Shavardino, Borodino. Okay, so there's Borodino there. Um, at this scale, you can see Borodino. And where is, there it is, Utitsi or Utitsa. So if you think of like your Labatai map, tactical level map of Borodino, usually you had, it covers, you know, from here all the way to here, which is the French right flank. And so the Russian army is kind of arrayed like this across this space. And so the French will come through here, um, probably more like right through there. Um, so as you can see when this is zoomed out, you're at a much wider scale. So you do a lot of maneuver so the Battle of Borodino, as it were, may never even be fought anywhere near Borodino. So that's the just the level that these maps are at. But they are very, um, I'm very fond of the the uh, OSG Library of Napoleonic Battles maps. Um, they have this uh, very kind of warm um, and sort of antique look to them in terms of they use this kind of parchment paper color background. Um, it's sort of an off-white. And then, you know, the artwork's very clean and very clear. Um, and then, you know, for the, the uh, title there, you know, what the what battle it is that you're looking at has with a little stamp and everything has this very antique uh, look to it. So you feel like you're looking at some old battle maps or something. So uh, it just, it's a nice little immersion feature that the game has um, that I particularly enjoy. Uh, when playing these games. So I'm looking forward to this one. Um, I've kind of been interested in the Russian campaign of late and uh, might put this on the table and uh, work through a couple of these scenarios. Um, I've got a strategic Napoleonics game uh, going at my war game club right now. And uh, that's Nations in Arms, the uh, Compass Games publication, which has been uh, pretty fun. We just got started with it. We're about one turn in. And uh, so far, it's it's been pretty entertaining um, putting those rules together. So anyway, enough rambling. Um, that was a look at Napoleon against Russia from the Library of Napoleonic Battles.